In Japan, there's no such thing as working nine to five. Here, the work culture is so intense, it can quite literally kill you. Karoshi, as it's known, is blamed for an alarming number of deaths every year. And now a series of high profile cases have led to a rethink of office culture, where clocking overtime is expected. I never want anyone else to feel the way I do. I strongly feel that a working style that steals the life of a hard worker should be eliminated. Emiko Teranishi lost her husband Akira to Karoshi. The sleep-deprived chef committed suicide after 20 years of never-ending shifts. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't eat, he'd just sit there, he couldn't focus, he began to have bad posture. It was like he completely changed as a person. His death is one of more than 400 chronicled in a government white paper. Others include 31-year-old reporter Miwa Sado, who suffered heart failure after putting in nearly 160 hours of overtime the month before. Then there's Matsuri Takahashi, the 24-year-old who took her own life on Christmas Day 2015. A court ruled relentless hours at Dentsu triggered depression. The advertising giant has since been fined four and a half thousand US dollars for its aggressive work practices. Emiko now runs a support group for others torn apart by Karoshi, but she's outraged that after such public and traumatic cases, the government's best solution is an overtime cap of 100 hours a month. If this is approved, it means even if you died by being overworked, it will be a way for the government to certify it as self-responsibility. But the government insists it's also naming and shaming companies caught overworking staff. This happens even before official sanctions are decided upon. It's something new that only started in January, and we are seeing what sort of impact it have on a target of zero karoshi. This workaholic lifestyle also isn't helped by the fact that getting time off here is incredibly difficult. Employees typically only get about 10 paid days off a year, but if they're sick, they either have to use those up or come in. There's virtually no escaping the office. I think we need a fundamental change in the market so people have the freedom to quit. I also think it's terrible that managers don't know how much their subordinates are working. But as Japanese workers are seeing, all work and no play makes you more than dull. It can actually kill you. Joel Arby, TRT World, Tokyo.